Well, good morning. I'm very happy to be here today. And I can confirm the theory of relativity Albert Einstein proposed about 100 years ago. Time flies in the Waikiki area, but time flows very slowly in my office. I don't know why, but I can empirically confirm his theory. Um, before talking about this uh, technical uh, presentation, I'd like to acknowledge my co-author, uh, Dr. Jun Wang. Uh, she started her PhD, completed PhD, and still working on this project. So Jun did all the work shown in uh, this presentation. And I'd like to uh, appreciate her contribution uh, to this research work. Here are the contents of my talk. First uh, introduction, I'll briefly talk about the need for research, why we need to study durability and performance of constructed facilities, especially bridge structures in this case. Then I'll be talking about complexity modeling, which is different from conventional modeling approaches. And number three will be about research. Finally, summary and conclusions, as well as acknowledgments will follow. Um, as we agree, long-term durability and performance of uh, built environments are important factors. And sustainability is a hot issue in, uh, since the middle of 2000. And inadequate durability uh, causes problems. Uh, the encroachment is, of course, a critical factor when you consider, for example, uh, the United States spent more than 3% of gross domestic product. So this is a huge amount. We have to address them. There are a lot of things we can do. Um, then some pictures of corrosion damage to bridge structures. A problem statement, the durability of highway bridges comprises several uncertain attributes. There are so many things that interact, evolve, and call this when subjected to various service environments. A network of these uh, certain attributes that uh, brings about uh, collective actions uh, to generate a complex pattern that you know, characterizes a structure's response. And complex systems uh, in general arise from simple phenomena produced by the reactions of uh, interdependent substances without a central control. This is a very interesting concept. Here's a small thinking cause, a large effect, uh, as in the case of the butterfly effect. So corrosion is uh, one of these. So we can consider corrosion being a complex problem because the migration of colloid is very small, but uh, impact is huge. So we did some research on complex interactive systems at element and structural levels uh, needs to be elucidated. And the complexity of uh, colloid progression through bridge structures uh, should be assessed. A transition process from the reciprocal reactions of colorized to unfavorable magnifications that influence the capacity of the bridge members is of our primary uh, interest. Finally, we need some structural strengthening to recover uh, the capacity of deteriorated structural members. To so move on to some modeling approach, uh, we uh, designed a benchmark bridge structures based on the Aster error of the bridge design specifications. You can see uh, uh, two span bridge structures and the units are in millimeters. We have a concrete strength in compression 30 megapascals to 45 MPa. We have diffusion coefficient and concrete cover, especially we consider cover based on the principle of the probability. I'll tell you uh, more in a minute. Then we uh, consider the three exposure conditions to simulate deterioration of 100 years, de-icing, splash, and uh, coastal. Uh, the strengthening work was conducted across numerically. There is a, a reduction of capacity more than 10%, uh, which is equivalent to rating factors of about 0.9 based on the load and resistance factor rating of ASHTER. Then uh, we uh, upgraded the capacity of the bridge members using carbon fiber inverse polymer or called the CFRP. And so schematics on strengthened and strengthened uh, bridge members. And as I said, we consider two uh, phases for cover depth. The first phase is about design cover based on the ASTO. The second is effective cover because we have no idea how 
contractors build the bridge and there is some you know, uncertainties. So we could have to consider a probability, as I said. So we can uh, simulate deterioration and construction margin uh, numerically. Uh, let's talk about a little bit uh, interesting concept. Uh, it's called agent-based model. If you look at the, the right picture, there are many human beings. In this room, we have many human beings, myself and you. I have no idea what you are thinking. You have no idea what I am thinking. Yeah, but even in this picture, people are moving here and there. We have no idea. Yeah, there is no centralized control here. But if we look at this concept, large scale, like society perspective, then we can find certain patterns. Uh, the second picture is about the flocking of birds. There is no leader, no language, no communications, but birds just interact together with their neighbors. But if you look at larger scale, as you see here, we can find a certain pattern. What about the colony of ants? Same thing, they don't talk. Okay? And no leader, they just interact together with their neighbors. But if you look at the larger scale, also we can find certain patterns, which is very interesting concept. So we did some modeling more uh, inspired by the computational sociology and sociophysics. So complex modeling was conducted in a multi-agent environment. An agent can be defined as a discrete entities reacting against the surrounding environments, as I just mentioned before. And agents are manipulated in a computational domain for a set of simple rules and characteristics that control decentralized behavior. If there is no leader in cohesion, polarized, they don't talk, no language. So I can find an analogy between the three things and the chloride migration. So each agent is a self-organized and concurrently interacts to generate a specific response pattern. The kinetics of chloride, no leader, no language, they just move, but we can find certain patterns like corrosion issues and which is structures. So our modeling approach is given here. Uh, as I said, it is some agent-based modeling. The modeling platform is created and uh, computational entities were generated. Interaction rules, very simple rule. Uh, then um, special and temporal boundaries were given. And we uh, predicted a corrosion initiation and propagation then check the capacity of each member. If capacity is good, then the modeling work was done. If uh, inadequate, then you need some strengthening work using uh, carbon fiber reinforced polymer or CFRP uh, sheets. So we formulated our models. Our primary interest was uh, near surface concrete just above the steel bar. And the rule was very simple, just a fixed law just a single equation, there are no other things. And our simulation domains are given, we updated chloride concentrations in special and temporal domains up to 100 years, as I said. So we did some uh, parameter or sensitivity analysis to define the size of agent that we adapted 1.27 millimeters, very tiny agents. Then we did validated our modeling approach, short-term, mid-term, and long-term, as you see here, good agreement was made. Then we generated technical uh, data. Now this is about the rate for diffusion coefficient. As you see here, about three, five years, the rate increased significantly. However, after that, the rate plummeted and about uh, 20 years, the influence uh, was virtually none because the concrete material is saturated by uh, the ingress that colorize and they block uh, the new uh, colloid ingress. Then colloid concentrations were predicted, especially uh, in the near surface concrete. As I said, we have uh, three exposure conditions, a splash, the icing, and coastal. If you look at the top, uh, the splash, the response was very complicated and magnitudes were pretty high. On the other hand, if you look at the coastal exposure, um, relatively stable and the magnitude is pretty low uh, because physically bridge structure is away from the sea level. So direct influence to the bridge structures where it's not really as uh, significant. We also looked at the corrosion current density. Uh, the top figure shows the effect of concrete strength from 30 megapascals to 45. 
With increased concrete strength, the current and current density decreases simply because microstructure of the concrete became dense. And we also looked at the, uh, the cover effect that I mentioned. So 31 to 144 randomly generated covers influenced uh, the current and current density. So we tried to quantify complexity, and this is not easy because there is no globally acceptable definition. The reason is this is complex. So our complex definition was based on the second law of thermodynamics, the reversible uh, migration of colorizing the superstructure concrete that I just mentioned is our uh, complexity. So we grabbed the Shannon's entropy with the physics area, H, and C is a constant, and P sub I is occurrence probability. Then based on our agent-based models, we uh, quantify the fraction of agents exceeding critical colloid concentration. So we're able to find the P sub I with time. Then we define the entropy-based complexity. Okay, <laughs> three more uh, slides. So the bottom figure shows the relationship between complexity and concrete strength uh, under the three exposure conditions. The physical meaning of this graph is a degree of disorder. I like to move a little bit fast. Some other you know, uh, reserved corrosion uh, initiation areas we consider building corrosion and uh, uniform corrosion. Capacity degradation after the initiation of the corrosion, of course, uh, we uh, reduce capacity. Then try to strengthen uh, these bridge structures. Uh, these two pictures, my uh, previous work, the uh, right one is about the first North American site application of pre-stressed carbon fiber reinforced polymer sheets for repairing a bridge structure. And the second uh, picture shows the word first uh, site application post tension uh, near surface mounted CFRP strips. Uh, the second project was conducted in collaboration with the Korea Concrete, uh, not concrete, this Korea Construct, Korea Institute of Construction Technology. I'm sorry, there are so many Koreas. I was in Korea last Sunday, so <laughs> we will. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see a sudden jump of uh, capacity about uh, 50 years because of the uh, strengthening effects. Then we uh, propose a certain uh, portion for FRP uh, contributions for strength, and we limit about 25% because if you rely on too much, then if something happens like vandalism, then there's a significant effect. So to summarize, uh, diffusion coefficients decrease over time, but over 20 years, we don't really need to worry about it because of reduced rates. The splash conditions exhibit higher complex indices, indicating the degree of disorder, as I said. Then inception cover, cross problems. Uh, then CFR for strengthening, of course, we did numerically in this particular project was uh, promising and actually we got long history in this area over 30 years and capacity recovery of 25% uh, that was recommended. And I'd like, like to thank the US Department of Transportation and the center. And before closing my talk, I'd like to announce a very interesting event. Uh, the Bridge Engineering Institute is organizing a conference July 17th to 20th, 2023 in Rome, Italy. If you need the information, please go to www.bibridge.org. And Rome is one of the greatest cities in the world. If I see you in Rome, I'll buy a pizza and spaghetti. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there. This side is waiting for you. And with that, I'd like to conclude my talk. Uh, thanks so much. A good point, Christian. And the two things, as you know, we have externally bonded CFRP and near surface mounted CFRP. 
And uh, the right picture is of externally drawn CFR. So we uh, uh, follow typical procedures, surface perforation, bonding, and then curing. The second one is about the NSM or near surface mapping CFR. But in this case, we really don't need any surface perforation because the CFR materials are inserted uh, in the gutter. So it is better in terms of durability. Um, however, we needed a lot more labor to cut uh, the groove along the gutter. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Oh, well, we'll have 